Marhaba wa sahla ya shabab. Welcome to a new part. Uh, this time we are finally going to do something for the CI CD pipeline. Finally. And the previous videos were only, only to properly set up our server so the CI CD process runs as smoothly as possible. So, to properly follow along, just go to my um, GitHub page github.com slash Habibi Coding. You will also find the link down in the description below. And head over to repositories. There you see the CI CD uh, dash tutorial dash YouTube repository. And click on it. Make sure you fork the repository. And when you have forked it, and uh, in you, you know when the fork is done, when you head over to, to your GitHub page and, and when, the, um, when you see this CI-CD tutorial uh, minus YouTube in your uh, profile. So the fork should probably last only two minutes. Okay, then open the project in your favorite IDE. In my case, it's IntelliJ. Make sure you check out the branch, the first branch here init underscore project underscore v1 and yeah this is the plain project without any of my changes but now since i'm adding the docker file i will create a new branch call it docker file underscore v2 and v1 v2 v3 will be just to let you know okay these are the changes i've done and finally when i'm done with the project um, you will see the master branch. In the master branch, there will be all the uh, changes available. So let's say create. And now we can start. Okay. Um, now you see I have opened my uh, IntelliJ ID, checked out the branch. And now we finally can start to add the Docker file which will um, create a Docker image for us and we will, our pipeline will push it to Docker Hub and then from the pipeline, um, we will uh, pull down the, the Docker Compose file, we'll pull it down from the Docker Hub. So just, I don't know, don't need this, close all tabs. Okay, go to the root of your uh, project directory, press on Command N on uh, Windows or just click here on create new file. This file will be named Docker file because every file, every Docker instruction needs to be in a Docker file and a Docker file doesn't have any ending. Let's add it to the uh, Git repository. And yeah, and your system will automatically detect this file. I mean, I have currently opened Docker desktop and if you have Docker desktop Docker installed on your um, machine, it will automatically detect any file which is named Docker file. So now we can start adding some stuff here. So the first thing what we need, we have to declare a uh, open JDK version. And we do this with capital letters from, I mean, you see, uh, I named it Docker file and I already have some autocomplete functions in here. So open JDK, we will use the slim um, version. As you can see, it's also working and say builder. And all the things I have doing here, I mean, we are using an, a current um, already existing uh, Docker image here. You can also find them all here on up docker.com and say open JDK and then you can search for all the tags here 21 slim 21 slim 21 slims 21 slim and all the 21 slims and you can also use like for 20 so, so it should be there as you can see it's 20, 20 slim, this is the one I'm using. Um, and also make sure you always specify a specific version of OpenJDK, don't use latest because it might, uh, you might encounter some problems. Now we have to set the working directory. We have to define it with workdir. 
slash build. I will call it build the working directory. And now we have to copy the files from the current directory to the working directory. So this will do by copy dot dot. Just make sure you have some space. Here is a space and here's a space and then a new line. Now we want to build the application. As you might know, if you don't have this um, icons in here to build the project, you can always build the project in a terminal. And this happens with uh, period slash gradle, gradle, gradle wrapper to be precise. Uh, it happens with run slash dot slash gradle wrapper build so when you have built the application we have to use a specific open jdk version for a runtime image so for the runtime image we are also using the same image let's make this also capital letters so we say open jdk colon also 20 slim and that's good yeah okay it's a little bit slow right now i'm now adding um, the next step is to create a new user and group for better security so again uh, run and then we are creating a new group add minus r for recursive let's call it app and the group is called app and we say user add minus minus no log minus init minus r for recursive again minus g for global and then for app app and yeah now we have to set the working directory for the app uh for that for the app folder for the, for the group and to set it for the group we do again work directory and say slash app so now comes a very interesting part because now we have to specify where things have to be copied. And that's pretty interesting because uh, I, will, I will show it to you right now. So let's say copy. Now we are copying stuff from builder to our working directory. Our working directory is built because we define it up here and we specify things where where they are located we say in build slash lips we have something there and now this will refer to my current um to my current project so if you take a look we have a working directory and then we are going again into a build folder. This is this build folder here. And here where, as you can see, we have the lips. This is the lips and we're copying this file. Um, and we're copying this file, but make sure you remove the, uh, the dash plane at the ending, just snapshot.jar. I don't know why, why it's showing things like this. And this, this file, this jar file will always be triggered when you either click here on build project and run the project or you just can do it with here on gradle uh, should be uh, here on build and when you build here the project on gradle build and then yeah on build again uh, but so this will cre create this jar file here it's it's uh, auto created okay and now we can just actually we can just copy the name and let's see if I can copy the name. Ah, I can copy the name. Nice. But as I said, make sure you just remove the dash plane at the end because it will 
cause an error. So what are we going to do? And now we are copying this file and creating a new one. And this jar file I will name, we can name the new created one how we want. So let's call it task minus app minus API dot char. Okay, looks good. I hope so. I hope I don't have any typos. Uh, now we're using the created user, which is also app. As you can see, we created a group and the user. So, so let's say user, which is app. Nice Latif. And now we have to set set the entry point for our, our application, basically. So this is entry point. Now we need square brackets. Okay. We have to define it's a Java application and we are using a jar file. Minus jar. Minus jar. And now we have to define the application, which jar file. That's this one. We we have named and created so task app minus API. Okay, that looks good. So now, and if you don't want to type everything out, you can always jump to my. Uh, it's not here. Wait, I, I'm sorry. Um, you can always jump to my uh, medium.com article, and there I have the full also with comments to know what is happening in each each step. And yeah, uh, this is the this is the final file, and yeah, just you have to make sure um, the name is correct. Just the dot the, uh, the dash plane at the end has to be removed, and this, for all files who are generated here in build and libs, always remove the dash plane at the end, and this name you can specify, and you have to just uh, define it here in the entry point as well. And yeah, that's the Docker file. That's basically it. And yeah, in the next in the next video, we'll start setting up our pipeline. But yeah, this Docker file will be needed in our pipeline, so I start with that first. And see you in the next video, Yashabab. Ilarika.